the uh, the other sort of uh, sort of uh, buzzwords and and boogeymen in the carnivore community would be things such as like mTOR and TMAO. And they say, like, oh my God, if you eat meat, then your mTOR is going to go up and you're just going to just get riddled with cancer. Obviously cancer is a much more complicated disease state than just one factor like that. But you know, that's something that they, they latch on because people are very myopic. They look at the, there's one thing that's a problem. And so that's that one thing. And they get very focused on this, you know, forgetting that this is a very, very complex system and there's a lot going on that, that, uh, that's involved. And then, you know, TMAO and so forth, they're saying, this is just toxic. This is, you're going to die of a heart attack and so forth. What are, what are your thoughts on mTOR and TMAO? Yeah. It's not just myopic. It's also completely blinkered in, yeah. in science. It's a concept that is actually a two edged sword because the concept is, is actually referred to, and it, its name is reductionism. Mm -hmm. It's good in that it's absolutely required, actually, to make scientific progress and to, de to derive scientific knowledge of cause and effect. To, to reduce something is to say there are only two variables at play, X and Y. What we do in science when we do experiments is we eliminate the influence of every other variable, Z, A, B, C, whatever. So we just have X and Y, and that's what we look at. As soon as you allow anything else to influence it, that actually invalidates your scientific study. And they'll say, "Ha ha, you haven't controlled your variables, and that's that's not a scientific study. That's now we're now it's a, now it's a naturalistic observation to whatever degree, and therefore the quality of evidence drops, etc., etc., etc." So we need reductionism to make clear cause and effect statements about the relationships between said variables. The problem is exactly what I've just outlined, though, and that is that in the real world, there are many other variables at play, and they do have an effect. And as such, it limits the utility, the applicability of the knowledge that we can get through reductionism. So when you look at something like mTOR, mTOR is a system within your entire metabolic system, which when looked at in isolation by itself, has been suggested as a cause of aging, cellular senescence, decrepitude, and eventual death, one of the many reasons that we die in the, at the end of our lives. mTOR has been activated. You eat meat, it activates mTOR, ergo eating meat is, is bad and will kill you. There's, there's that, that's the reductionist view. The analogy to that is like me presenting you with a cog from a 1982 Datsun Sunny 180B motor car. Not telling you that there's a company called Datsun or that they made this car at all. You've never seen this car. You don't even know that cars exist. I've just given you this one cog, this metal thing with teeth on it and a hole in the middle. Here you go, Anthony. Now tell me all about the car. You can't do it. It's nonsense. It's absolute rubbish mTOR does many things in your body um, and they will also be a hormetic thing as well as a thing that does tend to speed up cellular um, respiration, cellular lifespans, et cetera, et cetera. What we would have to do, so that's that's what we would call a mechanistic specu as a speculation. Okay, mTOR is going to kill you. Okay, that's the speculation. Great. What we then need to do is look at whether there is an association between the thing that we're claiming will upregulate the mTOR pathway, the consumption of meat, and does that correlate to an increased incidence of death or earlier death on average or any of these metrics that we look at in terms of hard outcomes, i.e. death, for example. Now, remember how we said association can't establish causality, but a lack of association can dismiss it. Well, that's what we've got. We've got a lack of association. The association that's found in these epidemiological studies is what's called statistically significant, meaning it is a relationship between these variables that occurred with a 95% probability not due to pure dumb chance, to use a very parsimonious explanation. Statisticians don't jump all over me. I know that's not strictly correct, but we have to be accessible to people. Okay. That's in theory, that's basically what it is. So 
get a life, basically. Okay, so that's that's what we're looking at here. Um, it's 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 a relationship that's definitely not due to dumb chance. That does not inform us on the magnitude of that. How important is the association? How much sooner will you die per X percent increase in your mTOR activation and then translate that to some kind of metric on a serving size of meat per day or whatever? Anyway, the answer is that the difference between meat eaters, even in the 10th or top decile of meat consumption versus vegans who consume no meat at all, over a 100-year lifespan in any given human being, the difference between this group and that group is in the sort of range of eight or so ten thousandths over a lifespan of 100 years. Mm-hmm. Plus the meat, frankly. <laughs> That's you know the lack of association. Okay, the hypothesis as a meaningful cause of death, meat eating, dismissed. Okay, mm. the same sort of relationships in epidemiology can be found with cancers of all kinds and meat consumption. In fact, most epidemiological studies, the raw outcomes before you adjust, actually show that meat eating is somewhat protective, mm. though not meaningfully. It, it doesn't show that there's an increase in the risk of cancer. Mm. So that's that one's busted. Same with heart disease, busted. Same deal. So you can pull out mTOR as a cog out of the gearbox as a reductionist thing. You can pull out any new 5GC. There's another one, a sialic acid, they say, is associated with meat eating. That'll kill you, absolutely. That one will. Yes. Same thing, no association. So forget it. TMAO. Not only is there no association, but also if you look at the thing holistically, in people who eat a lot of meat, their gut bacteria is adapted and speciated such that there's also a prevalence of another range of bacteria who actually gobble up TMAO and render it you know, null and void anyway. So of course there's no association because the only people that build up TMAO when they eat meat is people who don't habitually eat meat. So what they do in these studies is they feed vegan people meat and say, oh, look, there's a huge increase in TMAO, so that'll kill you. So stop eating meat, you idiots. Eat these plants, okay? That's what they'll say. Yeah. Rubbish, not science. It looks science it looks cool. They, they publish all these papers and you get absolute clowns like um, Joel, the used car salesman, Joel Conman Khan coming online and saying, I'm a world expert in TMAO and I can tell you son, it'll kill you and all this kind of stuff. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Joel Khan wouldn't know the difference between his anus and his elbow if I labeled both of them and taught him how to read. Yeah. <laughs> Man is, a, is an adjunct, adjunct professor by virtue of having been involved in, in cardiovascular medicine for many years, not because he's an academic. And he's got his name on hundreds and hundreds of papers like this TMAO thing by basically being a networker and getting his name on all these papers and saying, let's do this stuff on TMAO and prove how it's going to kill you and all this sort of stuff. And it's all funded by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, which, as mm. we all know, is the thing put together by Neil Barnard, who is another well-known priest of the Church of Anorexia Vegana, mm. another well-known vegan, basically, with an ideology to push. Um yeah, all of these guys are running around doing pseudoscience. This is just rubbish, all of it. It's just nonsense. It's It only serves to give them something to do to bolster their egos and to basically line their pockets at the expense of preying on the fear of basically ill-educated people in, um, in society who will believe pretty much anything, really. Yeah. If you, if you tell them enough, exactly what you said before, Dr. Che, if you, if you sell somebody something that's for your safety, for example, enough times, mm-hmm. they'll start believing that it's, yes, the, 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 the segregation of a group of people and their mass extermination as dangerous and, you know, a problematic 
um, in the 1930s, for example. This is for our safety. Absolutely, of course, it's for our safety. Let's do that. Yeah. You do it, of course. We don't want to be involved in that. You guys do it, though. But we're, we're okay with it, and we'll stand by and let you do it, pretty much. Yeah. Um, there's a similar thing going on now, actually, with a certain intervention that's being pushed around the world that shouldn't be, mm. um, for example. And we're just being told over and over again, safe and effective, safe and effective, safe and effective. And anyone that says, uh, no, actually, it's neither of those things. It's neither safe mm. nor effective. Um, they're being censored. Yeah. Actually. So anyway, you didn't, that's, yeah. that's not why you called. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, yeah, and and uh, you know, to your point, a lot of these things, you know, obviously, um, you know, associative and so forth, but also like, you know, what are they looking at? Um, you made a very good point that you have a very good, different gut bacteria uh, when you're eating a carnivore diet. Anything you eat, you're going to have a different different gut back biome. Um, and so these experiments are done with people that are quote unquote meat eaters um, that are still eating predominantly plants, and they just eat more than X amount of meat or red meat per week. And they say, Oh, well, these people that eat more red meat and still eat all the other crap too, maybe have a, a worse outcome in these associative correlative, you know, uh, pretty poor, uh, studies. Um, you know, but the, you know, sort of, I, the way I've, I've thought about it as well is that, you know, when you're eating meat exclusively exclusive to anything else, uh, first of all, you're going to have different gut biome, but also you're going to absorb nearly all of it. And so you're going to absorb all this stuff, like, you know, 98, 99% of the meat you eat, depending on how much gristle you get. Uh, you know, the Salisbury steak was, you know, mixing out the, the, the gristle and you basically are, are absorbing 100% of that. And so meat's not getting to your colon in the first place. So, you know, it's not a given that you're going to have that kind of gut bacteria to, you know, make, uh, you know, the TMAO. Uh, but even if you did, your, your, the meat isn't going to get there in the first place. So maybe you make a bit of TMAO. It's not going to be all that much, but you may or may not have the gut bacteria that you, that uh, would need, that would be requisite to do that. And as you pointed out, you, you would have other gut bacteria that would actually eat up what little TMAO you would make. Um, and then in a mixed diet of eating plants and fiber and so forth, that's really, the only time you're going to run into this as a problem, if it becomes a problem, and maybe that's what their you know studies are, are showing, um, because you're eating a bunch of fiber, this blocks enzymes to get to uh, the food that you're eating. It stops it from it blocks it physically blocks it from getting to uh, your uh, lumen of your intestine, and so this is going to be uh, expelled and goes into your, your large intestine. This was, this is one of the original reasons they said we should eat a bunch of fiber because it actually stops you from getting nutrition and you'll get less calories, which by any, any stretch of the imagination could never be an evolutionary model to actually limit the amount of uh, energy and nutrition that you got from your food. Most, most animals are starving to death and really struggling to survive. So that doesn't make any sense. So when you're, you're doing that and you're eating plants and you're eating fiber, only then are you going to get the meat down into your colon in any significant, to any significant degree. And at that point, you're going to have a different, different set of uh, gut bacteria. And so, you know, you're going to have the gut bacteria that's going to cause something harmful and you're going to have enough meat down there to, to cause enough of this sort of stuff. So let's say, let's assume for argument's sake, the TMAO is super bad. Um, it's only going to cause a problem if you're eating, you know, stupid ass plants. And like, if you're just eating meat, you know, you're not going to uh, have the, the requisite gut bacteria that's going to cause the, ma the majority of the problem. And you're going to have protective uh, gut bacteria as well, as you mentioned. And also it's not physically going to get there in the first place. So it's just really a moot point. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to ask your sort of question is because this, this is something that you would have looked into more than me because I've literally just dismissed this as an issue based on that because I'm like well if I'm not eating fiber it's not getting down there in the first place so even if it did make mTOR or, or, or sorry um, TMAO like I, I really don't care because it's not it's not applicable to me or other carnivores and so I've just sort of brushed it aside but um, you know it's good to know that uh, that I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't completely wrong on that one um, no, you, you've covered that absolutely expertly. That was brilliant from, from start to finish. That was absolutely, once again, nail right squarely on the head. Good. 